If you are visiting Prague for the first time, then you found the right video because I'm going to be sharing with you the best tips and hacks to ensure you have the best trip ever. I'm going to be telling you how you can get into the Czech Presidency Residency for free, some tips on the Prague public transport, and finally, if you want to eat at some fancy restaurants in Prague, I'm going to tell you how you can get some of that amazing food at half of the price. So with no further ado, let's start with the first tip, which is going to take your trip to the next level. So the first tip when exploring Prague is not to just follow a map. Take a random turn and discover some of the city's hidden gems. For instance, within the Prague castle, there are often overlooked sections on both sides of the castle which are worth exploring. One such gem is the Royal Gardens which is found right behind the castle and once it was heavily guarded and restricted, but now these gardens are now open to the public offering some breathtaking views of the castle and a nice escape from the crowds. Another intriguing spot is the smallest street in Prague which is in Malestrana under the castle and here this tiny street has a traffic light and this is also growing popularity on social media. And then another area is Novi Sviet which is right behind the Prague castle. This place is charming and it's a less visited neighborhood that offers a glimpse into the history of the people who are working in the castle. In the city center you have the Franciscan garden this offers a peaceful retreat from the hustle and bustle of the tourist areas. It's located right where the old town means the new town and it's a perfect spot to relax and enjoy a snack. These unplanned side quests will take your trip to the next level and make it unforgettable, revealing the city's true character beyond the usual tourist path. Prague gets incredibly busy, so if you want to enjoy the biggest attractions without the crowds, you need to wake up extra early. You need to be arriving around 6 a.m. and this is going to give you a chance to explore and take incredible photos without the usual crowds of people. For example, Prague Castle opens at 6 a.m. but you can see what it looks like when it's now afternoon. And if you also go and look at the Charles Bridge, this is what it looks like in the afternoon and evening. It's absolutely packed with people and it makes it difficult to fully appreciate its beauty. However, if you arrive at the bridge in the morning, it's nearly empty, giving you a picturesque, peaceful experience. And the thing about Prague, once it's noon, the crowds are going to keep coming on top of each other until it's late at night. So take advantage of arriving in the early hours. So right back on Charles Bridge, if you're tired of the crowds and you want a unique view <laughs> where no one is pushing and bumping against you, then you're going to find two gothic towers on both sides of the bridge and these were used to protect the old town from northern invaders. So for around 8 euro, you can climb up the incredible two Charles Bridge towers to get some incredible 360 views of the Vautava River and the bridge itself and you can see as far as Prague Castle and the old town. If you want to save a bit of money, then if you arrive at these towers in the first hour of opening, then entry to the towers is half price. Once you conquer the Charles Bridge Towers, there are four other iconic towers which are worth climbing. Apart from the Old Town Hall, the others also have half price entry in the first half opening for all the early beds looking to catch a bird's eye view of the Prague skyline. So let's talk about transport for a brief moment as there's been some significant changes which are worth noting. For all those wanting to save money coming from Prague Airport to the city center, then you can use the public transport. There's an efficient route, which is the use of the Airport Express bus, and this stops right at the Prague main train station. You can pay directly to the driver around 4 euro and the journey takes 30 minutes and you'll be right there in the city center. Just recently, Uber became the official partner for Prague Airport taxis. So if it's three or four of you, then it is more convenient and time saving to take an Uber. Then the total cost for the Uber is actually probably going to be the same price or cheaper than the bus. And you get to save time and effort without jumping into the public transport. Another recent change is that there's a bus service which is cheaper than the Airport Express. This is a brand new bus number, which is called number 59, and this goes to the closest metro stop, which is called Nadraji Veleslavin on the Green Line. Before, this route was called number 119, but that bus no longer exists. Once you get to Nadraji Veleslavin, you can jump on a metro to get to your desired destination. You just need a 90 minute ticket which costs 1.6 euro for one person. Getting tickets to the public transport in Prague is straightforward. You can buy tickets for 30 or 90 minutes, or you can opt for longer duration tickets that cover 24 hours or 72 hours. Prices are very affordable compared to other Western countries. 
good news is children under 6 and seniors over 65 can travel for free with a valid ID such as a passport which can prove their age and has a photo. Remember to validate your ticket once you enter the first transport system and always keep the ticket with you. If you exit and re-enter the transport system whether bus or tram, do not re-validate the ticket as the initial timestamp is going to be sufficient. Revalidating the ticket for the second time is going to make it invalid which exposes you to the risk of a fine. There are also limits in transporting luggage items. There is a size where it's free and if you go beyond that size, you do need an extra ticket. So now let's talk about some manners and some basic etiquette for public transport. If you don't want to be that rude tourists, there are some unspoken rules when you enter the public transport which you need to know and follow. When entering any kind of transport system or lifts, you need to wait on the sides first for the people to get out before you enter. Another important etiquette rule is that there are special seats in the carriage for pregnant, elderly and disabled people and then there's also an area for strollers and wheelchairs. So if you see someone coming in falling under one of these categories, then you need to stand up and move away otherwise you're gonna get some uncomfortable stares and people will not say nice things about you. Lastly when you're using the escalators, make sure to always stand on the right as there are some people who are in a rush who want to whiz past you and run on the left. So if you find yourself needing to be close to the Prague airport but you have a lot of time to spare, then you should check out the Pop Outlet shopping center. This place is 5 minutes by taxi from the Prague airport and there are about 3 bus lines which stop here also and they go directly to the airport. Here you're gonna find 80 shops with hundreds of designer brands offering discounts from 30 to 80%. You can easily spend hours exploring the shops here and the museums and if you have older kids you can go into Prague's largest indoor amusement park which is called Meyerland and I think even adults may enjoy this place. And the good news there's also restaurants and cafes in case you feel hungry. The Czech Republic is one of the few countries which has not yet adopted the Euro. The local currency here is the Czech Corona or Czech Crowns. If you feel like you want to bring some cash from your home country to exchange once you arrive, then you can do so as long as it's a major currency. However not, some Czech crowns with a thin line are no longer accepted as legal tender here. That means that if you obtain Czech crowns before you arrive, there is a chance that you might get outdated currency which will need to be changed at the national bank. So to exchange money which you bring, then it's best to do so at some of the Prague reputable exchange offices. There's a couple of recommended locations including the exchange office near the Old Town Square or also on Wensler Square and they are known for offering fair rates. But let's be honest, exchanging money is a real headache in this day and age. So it is better to just withdraw some small quantities of money, for example 1000 crown to just keep in your pocket for emergencies from an ATM. And you can also opt to use a card for most payments which you are doing. And the good news is, cards are widely accepted when you are paying in the majority of places in Prague. Some places are even just operating card only now. So the best time to come to Prague is gonna be in the summer period if you don't mind the crowds and the higher cost of things. During this time, there are some special gardens which are open. So head over to the Wallenstein Garden to admire the beauty of this place as entry is for free but note that it's open from spring to autumn. You can enjoy some koi fish filled ponds and some peacocks and if you keep an eye out on the summer evenings, if you are lucky, you may get a special treat of a free musical concert. If you really need to plan things out, then you can get more details on the senate.cz website. You can use Google Translate and go under culture and events where they list all the concerts which are planned. Another beautiful summer garden which I recently found is Vritpa Garden. This is a pay to enter Italian garden and the go to place if you plan something romantic like a proposal or something. If you are interested to visit it, then you need to check that it's open because it's open between spring and autumn in the months of April to October. On the top of the garden is an incredible viewing terrace where you can see the whole of Prague. You will get a few seconds alone on this terrace before the next person comes along to also snap some photos. Are you a fan of architecture and want to explore unique buildings in Prague that even locals rarely get to see? Then check out the Open House Prague Festival which is held in the middle of May every year. This festival offers tours of various interesting buildings scattered across Prague and then there's also some English language tours which are included. 
you'll get a chance to explore palaces, factories, and government buildings that normally aren't accessible to the public and it's all for free. One of the highlights of this opportunity is to enter the presidential residency which is located in the Royal Gardens of Prague Castle. And here's where past Czech presidents have stayed. I love that you can enter and explore the inside of this building during the Prague Open House Festival. You don't need to just aim to come within May, but if you're visiting Prague during the official Czech holidays, that also comes with some perks. Usually, if you want to visit some galleries or museums, the price of entry adds up because each ticket costs around 13 euro per person. Now imagine if you're with family or friends, that's a lot of money. So if you're here in Prague on some public holidays, the major national museums and national galleries they offer free entry where you just simply walk in. I don't know if this is great news or not, but the museums and art galleries are scattered throughout the Prague city center, so they won't get to be too busy because they have different art styles which caters to different people's interests. I visited two large art galleries which I found right in front of the Prague castle and they exceeded my expectation. Check out the old master's paintworks and also spend a couple of hours soaking in the beautiful pieces these galleries have to offer. I highly recommend this. During the weekday afternoons, Czech restaurants offer two types of food menus. One menu is the usual items the restaurant usually sells at full price, and then there's the special daily menu, which is offering cheaper priced meals, and this runs until 2 or 3 p.m. So if you're interested in getting a cheaper daily menu, then you should ask the waiters if that is available if it's not already provided to you. Within the daily menu, you do get a starter of a soup, and then there's usually a small choice of two or three dishes to choose from for your main meal. From my experience, if you want the best of the daily menu, then you need to be ordering between 11am and 12pm. As after that, the more popular tasted dishes, they will quickly run out due to popularity. So as we are talking about food and Czech restaurants, you may be wondering, do Czech restaurant staff even speak English? Do Prague residents even speak English? The good news is that language barriers are usually not a problem. Most places in Prague and other touristic cities have staff who can speak English or at least one person who's working there who does. If you want to earn some extra points, try dropping a few words or lines in Czech language. This extra effort will immediately improve the mood of the person which you're interacting with and you're likely gonna receive an even better service. Czech nationals appreciate it when someone tries to speak their language and if you do get stuck, don't hesitate to use Google Translate to help you out. So some basic words to learn are Dobri Rano for good morning, Dobri Den is good day, Ekui is thank you, Najravi for cheers before you take a drink, and Nasledano for goodbye. The sailor sounding greeting of Awoi is used more for close friends and family, so you shouldn't use that even though I know it sounds tempting to shout it to every Czech person you're gonna see, you have to resist the edge they may get offended. After you are filled up with your meal and it comes to time for paying, how much do you tip? 10, 25, 50%? Luckily, tipping culture is not out of control in Prague, at least for now. It is customary to tip 10% in the Czech Republic. However, nowadays, some places are tipping themselves around 12% as a service fee without even asking you are not rude, it's just like the restaurants are giving themselves a pat on the back. I found this is the case in tourist trappy restaurants and cafes where locals don't usually go. You can always ask the waiter to remove this tip if you feel like it's not necessary because you receive some poor customer service. Anyway, when tipping, you can add that on top of a bill and pay by card. However, I do recommend that you keep some spare change and coins in your pocket for tips because there is a handful of places which will not accept tips via card. If you're on a tight budget, but you still want to enjoy restaurant quality food, there is a growing popularity of websites and applications. You can get some leftover food which has not been served or sold, so it's not going to waste. This is a brilliant initiative, as some of the places are top-notch restaurants. A famous Czech site for this is nesnezeno.eco, and they are covering restaurants in the whole of Czech Republic. Selection on this site is just incredible and the discount you get is around 50%. You pick a time window where you want to pick your meal, you pay on the page and you simply pick up your takeaway and you go enjoy it as a picnic or back in your hotel. 
and the time slot is gonna be all the way from the morning to the evening so whichever time you want some meal you can find something a new entry to this market of discounted foods and reducing waste is the too good to go application which has launched recently within the czech republic this app is actually famous globally and more prague restaurants are getting on board with this app the selection of what you're buying is a bit more mysterious but it is increasing in popularity navigating prague is straightforward once you understand its layout the city is divided into two main areas on one side you have the historical old town the jewish quarter and the new town and this is where most shops are located this area is more touristy and it offers a flat terrain which is easy to explore on foot. On the other side of the Vautava river, this is the more rural feeling, classy side of Prague which includes the Prague castle and Malastrana or lesser town. It has more hills to climb as you head towards the castle but it is a magical part of the town. So make sure you check out our two day Prague itinerary for the best way to experience both sides of Prague efficiently within 48 hours. As you can see, Prague is huge. There's a lot of things to do and see. So you can expect to do a lot of walking. So make sure you're bringing some comfortable walking shoes or trainers as part of your suitcase. It is easy to rack up at least 15,000 steps a day if you wanna see all of the sites. Public transport is often unnecessary to use since most attractions are so close to each other and this makes walking the most practical way to get around. As you're spending more time outside, you need to make sure you're also dressed for the trip in Prague to match the season which you're gonna come. In the winter period, between December and March, temperatures can get as low as minus 20 degrees Celsius, and I kid you not, it's ridiculously cold. The summer temperatures between July and August can pick up to 38 degrees Celsius. So make sure that you're packing the appropriate clothes which you need. If you see yourself in a situation where you forgot to bring the appropriate clothes, then head over to Winsler Square where there are a lot of shops to choose from to buy some emergency clothes and jackets. Options range from the cheap places like Primark to the heavily discounted designer outlet shops like Half Price, which is selling some expensive brands at a fraction of the price. If you see yourself here in the hot summer days and you do want to use public transport, the metro underground is pretty cool with some strong breeze there, but to enjoy the city views, you may opt to use trams. Not all trams are gonna have aircon. You can ahead of time identify which trams have aircon on public transport applications like PubTran by checking for this symbol right here. And in the street, you can identify trams with the bright yellow mask in front or they have this logo by the door showing that they have aircon. If you do not see the expected tram which you're waiting for, then don't waste your time waiting in the heat because sometimes they just don't turn up. A fun tram to take though is the Prague historical sightseeing tram. There are two lines which you come across. Line 41, this runs in the summer time period from March to November and a single adult ticket is around four euro. Then you have line number 42, which operates all year round and you can buy a 24 hour ticket for 14 euro. And if you do buy an all day ticket, you can use it on both lines. In both trams, you can buy tickets from the conductor either by cash or by card and the experience is really enjoyable. And then they also have some discounted rates if you meet some conditions. I highly recommend this experience. Once you're seated in the historical sightseeing tram, they're gonna pass through three big famous attractions of Prague which you cannot miss, which are Prague Castle, Charles Bridge, and the Oton Astronomical Clock. These attractions are free to enjoy from the outside. If you do want to enter any of the buildings which are connected to them, then you have to buy a ticket. Before your visit, just don't buy any skip the line kind of tickets gonna come across because most likely they are not valid. It is better to pay in person. So let's talk about astronomical clock. Hundreds of people come together every hour in front of the clock to see the dance of the saints. Whilst it's an entertaining spectacle, venture inside and buy a ticket to go on a guided tour exploring the inside of the old town hall itself. Daily tours are held in English, Czech language, French, and Spanish. You will get to explore the underground, where most people don't get to see. And a cool thing is you get to see the dance of the saints from behind the clock where there's no crowds. And this is quite a unique experience.
As you plan your trip, you are also going to come across this iconic view of the Pragoton Square. So how do you get that amazing photo? Well, you can head over to Teresa O'Prince restaurant and go to its rooftop bar. Here you can order a small beverage or some ice cream and you can capture an amazing photo of the Pragoton Square. Be aware, this is one of those places which self tips 12.5% service fee. The view of the Old Town Square is worth it and the staff were actually friendly during my visit but the food and the beverages you're gonna get are overpriced for the quality you're gonna get. Who doesn't love a good quality ice cream on a hot sunny day or even on a cold day? The most famous ice cream chain in Prague is Creme de la Creme, but I warn you, this place is queues and you can expect around 10 minutes of waiting in the summertime, but the quality of their gelato ice cream is great. If you want a more expensive but fun ice cream, then you should definitely check out Amorino which is right by the Old Town Square. Their ice creams look so cute, you don't even want to eat them and they are also very tasty. If you are like me and you need a good cup of coffee or two in a day, then you are in luck. Prague is a lot of coffee shops and coffee is more than just a drink, it is part of the culture. So you need to install the European Coffee Trip app and this is your best friend if you are into coffee. They have a list of all the best coffee shops across the city. So instead of wasting your time wandering aimlessly in Prague, you can use their application or the website to see what is the closest best coffee to you. And the good news is they cover all districts of Prague no matter where you are staying. This application also shows cafes which are having breakfast options and then there's also some vegan friendly cafes which you can select. If you click navigate button on the bottom, you can also get step by step directions to get to the cafe you want to go to. If you are visiting for more than 3 days, I seriously recommend you consider to go outside of Prague for a day trip. The easiest way to achieve this is through cheap and frequent bus services. Take for example radio jet buses or flix buses. They have websites which are fully in English so it's easy to search and you can go to for example Chesky Krumlov. You can get a bus leaving Prague at 8 am, you get there before noon, you explore the town for 7 hours, jump on the bus back to Prague in evening time and you'll be back at 10 o'clock. Check out our video where we cover the top 10 Czech cities which you must visit and good news is they are all a day trip away. So recently the Czech Republic made news as it earned the title of having the highest beer consumption per capita. In 2023, the average Czech resident drank 128 liters of beer per year. Let me know if this is something we should be proud of or not in the comments. It is not surprising as beer in restaurants is often cheaper than water and non-alcoholic beverages. The other thing is Czech Republic is the birthplace of Pilsner beer which was the first pale lager to be ever created. So if you want, you can try some fresh Pilsner on the tap and they are usually stored in huge tanks in restaurants or pubs which are known as Hospoda in Czech language. Something I did discover when I arrived in Czech Republic is there are several traditional pouring methods for the beer and each offers a unique experience. So let's start with the Ladinka. This is your standard pour which you find worldwide, a thick head of dense foam on the top of the golden lager. This is crisp, refreshing and delicately bitter with the foam trapping the beer aromatics. This is meant to be eaten with rich foods like ducks. And then you have this which is called a sneet pour. This enables the beer to stay fresh for longer periods of time. It is equivalent to a small beer to enjoy with a hearty meal and you don't have to feel embarrassed that you ordered a small beer. Finally you have the mliko which translates to milk and it's a glass full of wet beer foam with a little bit of beer on the bottom. So if you are a beer enthusiast, make sure you try these three types of beer pours. A good beer must be enjoyed with a traditional Czech dish. However, be wary of tourist traps, especially in the city center where the crowds are the largest. So how do you at least avoid bad restaurants? As a general rule, avoid restaurants between the Old Town Square going all the way to Karlova Street and where the Charles Bridge starts. 95% of the restaurants in this strip are overpriced tourist traps. A big red flag is when they have pictures of the food plastered outside the restaurant. To help you navigate the culinary scene, we have a comprehensive video guide on our channel where we rate the top 10 best Czech dishes you must try. We also provide the Prague restaurant suggestions where you can try some of these incredible dishes. Not only is Czech food great, 
but you can also not leave Prague without trying some of their traditional desserts. Head over to the Cafe Mishak and also Cafe Savoy where they sell the top two desserts you must try. One is a shoe pastry with caramel based cream in the middle which is called Vertrinik and this thing is ridiculously sweet, creamy with so much depth and complexity. It's so good. And also try their warm soft yeasty buns in vanilla custard which tastes like absolute heaven on earth. After enjoying the calorie rich Czech cuisine, you need to walk it off. You can go for a hunt for the quirkiest statue which you can find in Prague. Can you find the Franz Kafka statue or his rotating head? How about the strange Vodnik statue in Chertovka's river? Or the babies which are climbing up the Zizkov TV tower? There are so many hidden art installations throughout Prague which are ready for you to discover. So keep your eyes open and let us know in comments what are some of the strangest statues you will find. Another strange -ish, depends how you look at it, attraction is the John Lennon wall. This is the only place in Prague where you are allowed to write a message on the wall. Just note there are some rules where you can use either a marker, pencil or chalk to leave a wholesome note for future Prague visitors to read. If you want to experience Prague when it's lively, bustling, you should plan your visit during one of the city's many festivals. The Christmas and Easter holidays are particularly notable and very famous with vibrant markets which is adding to the festive atmosphere. There are also unique festivals such as Nabalis which celebrates St. John of Nepomuk, the patron saint of all people associated with water. This festival is held in May on the Charles Bridge. Another festival to experience is the Prague Signal Festival which is typically held around October which is featuring some light sculptures and installations which are throughout the city. Some of these light displays are interactive which offers a unique and engaging experience. As you explore Prague at night, you might wonder about safety. Rest assured, Prague is a very safe city with very low crime rates. Theft is relatively low compared to other European countries, but it is important to keep an eye out on your belongings, especially in the crowded areas like metros, because opportunists can always be present. We have a video on our channel where we cover the best areas to stay in Prague, and we also tell you where it's safe and which areas are classified as sketchy, so check out that video later. As you explore this city, you may also want to find some toilets. Usually, the slightly cleaner ones are found in restaurants and cafes, which you can freely use as a customer. There are also toilets in the larger metro stations, and when you're walking in the city center, you can look out for big green WC signs. But when you use these ones, you need to have coins because you need to pay the attendant or the automatic ten store to be let in. Sometimes the men's toilets will not accept cards, they prefer coins. It is important that you bring the right plug to charge your phone or other electrical devices. In the Czech Republic, we use the standard European plug type which looks like this. If you forget to bring a universal power adapter, then you can head over to some electrical shops, for example, Auser Shop or Dartite. These are chains where you can buy your electrical things which you need and the prices are very competitive and very legit. So now I want to cover a few areas for those who don't like headache or stress. So the first one which we want to tell you is to avoid the mini markets because everything here is going to be overpriced at three to five times compared to other shops. And they sell most things which are not really practical. And due to the Czech currency being different, you will not realize that you've overpaid for something. So you are better off going to supermarkets like Albert, Tesco or Billa. And another thing which you need to avoid is renting a car in Prague. The stress and the headache of managing a car in the city is just not worth it. There are many unique Czech driving rules which are not so obvious without an orientation driving class. Most traffic signs are also in Czech language and finding parking in Prague city center, oh my goodness, this is such a challenge. In the afternoon, you might spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes searching for a spot and parking is quite expensive in the city center. So if you do drive to Prague, make sure that you check that the hotel has some long-term parking for visitors. This can save you a lot with dealing with parking difficulties upon arrival. Using public transport or walking is generally more convenient and less stressful. If you are tempted to use the electrical scooters, then do not ride them on the pavement. If you are caught by the police, you're gonna be fined on the spot 80 euros. So now for something fun, 
if you want a vibrant experience in the summer, then head over to Naplavka. This is right by the dancing house. This popular spot is favored among Prague locals and residents. On Saturdays, you can visit the farmer's market where you can find a variety of fresh produce and delicious food. Every summer day in the evening, you can also enjoy the lovely atmosphere of the bars and lounges whilst you're sipping a refreshing drink, admiring the distant view of the Prague castle and the boats which are moving along. Additionally, you can use the public transport ticket to take a small boat ride to get across to the river where there are more bars and restaurants providing a unique way to enjoy Prague. Another fun activity is to step out of the city center and head over to the Prague Zoo which is 20 minutes away. This is one of the best zoos in Europe. You can expect quite a lot of open space, a great selection of exotic animals and you can also buy the zookeeper experiences where you pay a fee and you get to be a zookeeper for a day or you can simply feed some of the animals. We certainly enjoyed our last visit to the zoo and this is an activity which you can enjoy for the whole day. If you're a person who just loves experiences, a money-saving option which you can consider is to get the Prague Visitor Pass. This is available to purchase on the tourist centers or you can get it online. This pass is designed for travelers interested in visiting multiple attractions each day. If you plan to visit at least four places every day over three days, then at that point it can save you money. The pass not only covers entry to the wide range of the top attractions, but it also includes unlimited use of the public transport, including travel to the airport with the Airport Express bus. And there's also some discounts which you can get. Before your trip, consider checking out the pass on their website to see if what's included is aligning with your itinerary and travel style because this may potentially offer some convenience and cost saving. If you are planning a budget-friendly trip to Prague, then consider visiting during the low season where hotel prices are going to be more affordable. Typically, outside of the peak holiday seasons like Easter, summer, Christmas, you can find better rates. One option is to visit during spring from January to March, but you do need to know that it's going to be still a little bit chilly at this time. Another budget-friendly option is to visit in autumn from September to November. It is after the summer holidays, so it's most likely going to be a little bit warmer and Prague looks extra cute when it's autumn. Keep in mind that some of these summer attractions will be closed during the winter times, but I personally find summer to be more enjoyable. So if you're coming with very young kids, this is going to be quite a helpful tip after you check in in Prague Airport. So during the waiting period before you actually board a plane, you can take advantage of the kids playroom which is located within the airport. This space provides facilities like a kids changing table, it's even got a microwave which you can use to warm up your prepared meals. This provides a calm and safe environment for your children to enjoy and eat their meal peacefully before you get on a long flight. Entry to this room is free. I also like that it's equipped with the TV, which displays the flight details, gate numbers, which is also pretty sweet. If you've forgotten to buy souvenirs or treats to take home after a trip, don't worry. Before you enter security and get to the expensive duty-free section of the airport, if you come in between Terminal 1 and 2 of Prague Airport, there is a supermarket which is called Bila. Here you're gonna be able to purchase some check snacks and treats to surprise your friends and family back home. Once you pass through security, you will find the duty-free shops, but the prices are gonna be higher than outside. But Bila provides a convenient and more affordable option for some last minute shopping before you depart. So now we're at number 50. Choosing the right accommodation can make or break your trip to Prague. With approximately 10 main districts to choose from, it is crucial to pick the right one which suits your preferences, which is also safe for family or solo travelers. Watch this video guide here where you explore the best areas to stay in Prague, giving you insights into the vibe of each district, helping you decide which one aligns with your personality, and we also include some tips on some top-rated amazing restaurants to enhance your experience. So if you already decided where you want to stay, then check out this other video, which is a two-day itinerary with some incredible restaurant recommendations and some great things to do covering the whole of Prague.